Hi, my name is Joe. Welcome to my shop. <laughs> Today we're talking about traditional steel lug crown forks. Uh, when it comes time to bend the rake into these guys, uh, you can actually make a crude tool that does a pretty good job. Tube bending is fickle, bending thin wall bike tubes is tricky to get a nice smooth bend, but because uh, these these tubes have a relatively thick wall to their diameter, you actually don't need that sophisticated of a bender. It's one of the first tools I ever made. Let me show you what I made. This right here, I call this thing the moon raker. This is just mild steel that I stole from well, I should explain, uh, my dad was a farmer for like 45 years in Michigan, that's where I grew up, and so he had a crude, you know, workshop, and they had MIG welders, and they had an Ellis bandsaw, and so you could make rough fabrication stuff. I was never that good at that when I was younger, and I was certainly not good at MIG welding, and I, I got into bikes, and uh, I took a frame building class, and I had seen a bender in that class, and I wanted to mimic it, and so I had an idea of, of you know, what I was after, and I just kind of stole some, some mild steel and stuff off the, off the racks there in my dad's shop, and I welded it together in an afternoon, and I spray painted it with something, and drilled some holes in it, and whatever. I, I machined this on a lathe, turned this on a lathe, I had no idea what I was doing, it, didn't, it doesn't look that pretty, but the, the point is that, uh, oh, and then the bottom part of this is oak. So I made this in my dad's basement, uh, and it's just, you know, could be pine, you would really want to have some harder wood, something like, uh, you know, oak or ash or something. But anyway, uh, I made this with simple woodworking tools, and I made two of these. So one is a six inch radius, and one's an eight inch radius. Uh, this would be the eight inch. I use this one a lot more. This is a, more of a six inch radius, like you would have on, uh, uh, you have tighter radius bends. You, you see that more on like older, um, you know, rando bikes and stuff. It's more of a traditional style. Uh, and then this is more of like the sporty 70s and 80s. You know, I'm not a bike historian for, for road bikes and stuff, but it, you tend to see that more on like newer of the, the vintage road bikes, right? So um, it's a really simple bender. And, uh, you know, I could have made it a lot better, but it, it works fine. And so the idea is you make the block here that um, the tube gets bent against, and then you make a long lever. That's the trick. You can buy uh, some tube benders that look kind of like this um, that just, the lever works, but if you have a little bit more leverage, it makes it a lot easier. And then um, there's a clamp mechanism. It's really very simple. The idea is that when you have a tube like this, uh, it's relatively pretty heavy wall to its diameter and so when you go to bend it um, it's going to ripple just a tiny bit on the inside and it's going to stretch a little bit on the outside and it's so subtle you, can, you can't really even see it uh, it's very, very, very subtle. When you go to do that with seat stays and chain stays and main tubes of a bike, it is very difficult to do. I mean, you're not going to see it through the paint here, you know? Uh, when, when you go to do that on main tubes of a bike with traditional wall thicknesses, it's just so thin, it just wants to ripple and kink, and you need a much more sophisticated bender that fully encapsulates the tube, that holds it tight at the point of tangency where it's getting bent. Uh, it's really a whole different ball game when you get into those tubes. But these ones are easy to bend as long as you bend it against something uh, and you have enough leverage and it's held kind of securely, it's going to work. So, so we come in a little bit closer. This is my design. There's a main block here. I drill the hole through for the pivot arm. Of course, this is kind of tight. Uh, you know, it's not the best Ah, fit and finish. I've come a long way in about the eight years, you know, since I made this. I, I was really a terrible builder of random stuff, and now I consider myself a pretty decent, you know, at least amateur machinist, right? Um, but anyway, so uh, this pivots here, and then this is the, the pivot for the clamp. The clamp mechanism, you know, just a bolt, and um, I made this this little piece of angle iron. I just ground this up, and I put a little flat on there. And so, you load your tube with the tip down here, and then it tapers out. And uh, I, I wish I had a tube to demonstrate. You have the, the oval of the tube in this orientation, ah, coming out here. And so you put the tip down in there, and this just allows you to get a nice clamping pressure without leaving a mark from the head of your screw. But you just back this out enough to clamp down on the, the tip of the blade there. Tighten that up good. All right, yeah. Tighten that up decent. 
and then you know now you have a lever arm and you pull back and what I did is uh, I actually use this one a lot more I don't know if you can even see it on here. But what I would do is, uh, for the bending arm, I would just use a pencil. And so I would just put a mark where I thought I was gonna bend to, and then I would bend that far, and I'd take it out, I'd check the bend, and then if it was good, I'd put the other one in and I'd bend to the same mark. If not, then I'd put the same one back in and I'd bend to a similar mark. It's not the most precision or repeatable thing, but this is a very simple tool. So the way that I like to use this is in a bench vise, but you could easily build some sort of base for it and actually bolt it down. That might be better. So I have this nice heavy bench and this heavy bench vise, which I think are essential to this kind of shop. And so I just bite down on this guy, something like this. Ah, nice and tight there. And now I would lift this guy straight up. And now I load my tube in and it's gonna be sticking back something like this. I clamp this down tight enough to hold it, you know, get a pretty good, pretty good tension on that thing. And now when I go to bend, you know, I really have a lot of leverage here. If it was a little bit shorter, I'd probably get the job done. But if you just give yourself another 12 or 18 inches over what you think you need, it's really gonna make it easier. So this one, from the pivot to the end is 46 inches. You know, something like that is gonna work pretty well. I drilled these different holes here, not because the tool needs to be adjustable necessarily, uh, although I guess that's not a bad idea. I don't think I've ever changed the position of this. I just didn't really know how far along here I would want it. And so I put it in one spot, seemed to work, I just left it there. You know, these are just drilled on a drill press. They don't have the kind of positional accuracy that I do nowadays with the stuff I machine, but it got the job done. You know, I didn't even deburr these, you know, they're pretty rough. But uh, again, this is a crude tool and, and it works. You know, there's, there's no bushing in here, there's no grease, there's no bearings. It just kind of fits. You know, this is very rough. But it, it works, you know, it's, the stakes are completely different in this bending scenario than they are with other bike tubes. And so if you're just looking to bend the fork blades of a uh, traditional lug crown steel fork, this will do it. So w when I made this, I just wanted to have options for different radii for bending. This one is the tighter, this one is the... Uh, less tight, the looser, the, the you know, the eight inch radius. I think that um, if I could do it again, I'd probably just do an eight inch or maybe an eight inch and a 10 inch. I never did the tighter radius. So that's up to you and, and the style that you're into. The tighter radius is gonna be harder to bend without kinking, especially if it's lighter weight. So when you go to make one of these, there's different ways you can do it. I think probably the easiest way is the way that I did it. And if you look at this, I mean, this is crude, but if you look at this, it's actually just two pieces of oak that are sandwiched together. And, um, and so what I did was I just used a, a you know, off-the-shelf wood router and I had a, some sort of rounding bit, I guess, and I, I set the depths and it had a you know, bearing guide or something. So, so I, I cut the shape of this you know, I just drew it out on, on the wood. I cut the shape of it with a jigsaw or something, maybe a vertical bandsaw, probably a jigsaw. And then, you know, I kind of sanded them so they were at least kind of uh, <laughs> similar. And then, uh, and, th and then I used, while they were still two pieces, uh, I could trace the edge with a router and give it half of the round shape so that when I put it together, all I had to do was kind of, uh, after the glue dried, kind of sand out the glue and I was left with a pretty good round. This, what you see here, is totally inappropriate. This is a case of a couple years ago and I didn't have the two benders I wanted. I thought, you know, maybe I could bend a 7 8 chain stay in here if only I kind of chiseled it out. And so I, I modified a 7 8 tube Tube, you know I sharpened the end of it as if it was a chisel and I chiseled this away it actually looks kind of decent for you know I'm not a woodworker I didn't know what I was doing I had the wrong tool it kind of actually worked but but like I'm saying you know when you go to bend larger diameter tubes with a relatively thinner wall it's a totally different ball game you need a totally different kind of bender if you hope to get good reliable repeatable results that don't have kinks and ripples and stuff so that didn't work for me now I've kind of bastardized this thing you can see here that's more of the original profile that I had that's not necessarily perfect you don't need it to totally fit the tube perfectly you're looking for you know a V or a round uh, this has a little bit of give to it so as you get a heavy load on there it might squish a little bit or over time it might deform some but the point is something kind of like this uh, round on here 
You're just gonna kind of cradle the tube uh, and guide it along. You know, this here, you're really on the flat. I don't think that's ideal. But it's, it's a pretty simple tool though. And you load it up and, and you make a bend. I don't have any tubing or I'd demonstrate a bend. Um, yeah, but maybe I can demonstrate how I do the uh, measuring of the offset. So this is a tube from a fork. I don't even remember how this came about. It looks like this was a fork and then it was removed, unbrazed from the fork crown. But I wanted to demonstrate if you have uh, some sort of work table, it doesn't need to be reference flat like this. And then if you have some simple measuring devices, usually on like a, an oval fork blade like this one, uh, these, these faces here are actually parallel. Or if it was round, up here is straight and then it tapers. So I'd use the straight section of the tube, like this sort of, and then if this is 28 millimeters tall or whatever it is, you'd take half of that to get on your tube center line. And then you'd measure, I just modified this ruler so, you know, it's just a bike shop ruler, just so you can hook it on something. It's not super precision, but it's really helpful sometimes. And, um, and so anyway, you just measure, you know, from, from the center of the, the uh, axle there to the edge of the table, it looks like I'm getting about 59, 60 millimeters. And so if you subtract 14 from that, uh, what's 14 off of 60 is 44. So, you know, it's about 44 millimeter of rake on this as it's set up. And so, uh, you know, if you have like one of these dropouts that's a socket style, you know, you can, you can get it so it has good fit up on the end of the tube you know, maybe cut the tube at the right spot in the taper so that it fits on there and get that prepped. And then when you go to bend it, put it in there, put a Sharpie mark on this where it's gonna meet some reference so that you can put it back in the same spot every time. And then do a bend to where you think you might need to, take it out, put it on here, measure how much rake, how much forward offset you have. If it's too much, uh, you can, I don't know if you have enough leverage just pushing on it like this, but that's sort of the motion you would need. You could put it in a in a vise or something, or you could uh, you could put it in a uh, you know this this here you you'd maybe leave a mark. But there's ways to just bend it back. When you bend it one way, it's it's a lot more willing to bend back a little bit than it is to bend further. So you can bend it back if you have to. You don't want to overshoot your bends. Uh, but but that's how I would measure it. Is you know setting it up and then measuring the offset to an edge like this. It works pretty well. Uh, you know, these kinds of forks are not like incredibly uh, high precision things. You put it in a fixture that hopefully is rigid and hopefully is accurate enough so that in the socket up here at the top, uh, if, if it's bent just a little bit too much or a little bit less, it could just tilt just a tiny bit and that would, that would account for like the discrepancy in how much they were bent. Um, so I think the bending of it is really not a super precision thing in terms of the kinds of bends that are in bicycles and in terms of the parts of the bicycle that need to be really accurate and, and precise and all that, uh, fork blade bending is not, nothing too fancy about it. As far as layout, when you, when you go to draw, you know, draw the lines that you're going to cut on. You know, just using a compass like this will help you figure out the radii that you're looking for. What makes it easy is none, none, none of this is critical. So, you know, the, the pivot point here for this arm, that's not actually the center of this arc. You know, you just need a pivot spot to get some leverage. If you look at this, you know, it goes from being, you know, however far away from the block to being a lot tighter. It doesn't really matter uh, necessarily because it, you know, it works. Now, if you if you put it in the optimized spot, you'd probably get a little bit better leverage, but um, that's not re what really makes it it function. It's just you know the the nature of the lever. You need a pivot spot. So, just tracing this out crudely and uh, and cutting it. You know, none of this is really precision work at all. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to point out that this particular tool is ripe for making uh, making something like this, even if you don't have a CNC mill, even if you don't have a manual milling machine, even if you are not that experienced with fabricating tools, but you need that tool. You know, there's a lot of bike making tools that kind of need to be uh, precise or, or you know have a nice fit and finish for for different attributes to them to actually work well you don't want to build a tool and then rebuild it later and then modify it and rebuild it and then end up buying the professional thing I've done that with a couple of the tools that I've that I made and made over and uh, that gets old you learn from it
it's not wasted time, but uh, this is the kind of thing you could learn from it and then you could keep using it for a long time because it would be good enough to get the job done for quite a while. So if you're like a beginning builder, if you don't see yourself building a lot of these forks but you want to have the tool, uh, you know, it's, it could be a really good project. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful and uh, we'll see you around.